So, with the end of life of Windows 10, some people may wonder if there's a Linux distro suitable for them. One that feels familiar and easy enough to use. Well, there may be such a distro, and that distro may be Zorin OS. Zorin OS is a Linux distribution that aims for an experience similar to that of Windows, at least as far as look and feel is concerned. It should be noted that the underpinnings of Linux and Windows couldn't be more different, and no amount of theming will change that. So with a similar taskbar, a similar start menu, and other similar features, could this distro be something that Windows users might want to use? Let's find out. Also, by the way, I'm not going to make a tutorial on how to install Zorin. There are plenty of tutorials online on how to install Linux distros onto your PC, so go check those out. Now on with the video. Starting with the installer, it's very simple, yet also surprisingly robust when it needs to be. Basically, you just hit continue and configure some very basic settings, like what time zone you're in and stuff like that, and bam, you have just installed Zorin OS onto your PC. If you need to do something more complicated like partitioning, you can, but if you want to use your entire drive with Zorin, you really don't need to do much. Just use the default options. I wish Microsoft would implement an installer similar to this one on Windows. Also, just a heads up, installing this will erase all of the contents on your drive, so fair warning. You can also opt for test driving it via USB without installing anything by selecting this option. Once installed, you're greeted with a little tour. This will walk you through the basics of Zorin, like opening your start menu, connecting any online account, and installing apps, among other things. On the surface, using Zorin OS is very similar to using Windows. On the leftmost part of your taskbar is your menu from where you will launch your apps, similar to the start menu in Windows. To the right of that are your pinned apps. Further to the right, you have your workspace switcher. This is something that's relatively new to Windows, so it may not be used by some users. Then you'll find your system tray next to the quick settings and your notification panel slash calendar. Similar to Windows, right clicking on the taskbar will present you with more options such as taskbar settings and the option to open the system monitor, similar to the taskbar in Windows. Right clicking on the desktop will present you with more options such as changing your wallpaper or opening the settings app, among other things. Speaking of the settings app, you'll find that it's relatively easy to configure your system through it. Everything is laid out in an easy to understand way, and that takes the hassle out of configuring your settings. Not everything can be configured directly through here though. In the appearance section, you'll notice a link on top that takes you to Zorin Appearance when clicked. In Zorin Appearance, you can configure Zorin specific stuff such as the layout, your theme and accent colors, desktop effects such as wobbly windows, which icons appear on the desktop, window placement when opening windows, fonts, and other stuff like that. Zorin by default comes with some very basic apps to get you up and running. You get LibreOffice as the office suite. Rhythmbox has your music player, GNOME videos to watch videos locally, a web app manager for all of your web apps, and Brave Browser as your internet browser. Brave has gotten some flack over time for including crypto and AI in its browser. However, Zorin disables most of that stuff by default. So the experience on Zorin should be more minimal and require less configuration than normal out of the box. You can install a different web browser from the software center if you'd like. It should be noted though that uninstalling Brave can mess up your package manager, which is what Zorin OS uses to install stuff. You will unfortunately need to go into the terminal to fully uninstall Brave. Some people say that this is the fault of Zorin, but this same thing has happened to me on Kubuntu, so it's probably more of a Brave thing. So just a heads up. For most other things though, you won't need to use the terminal. Software installation is, with the exception of Brave's situation, a breeze. Just launch the software center, or whatever it's called in here. Search for something and click install. It will ask you for a password in order to install something. This serves a similar function to UAC on Windows. Wait a few seconds and bam, you have just installed something in Linux. To uninstall something, just click uninstall. It's that simple. Sorin does allow for an easy way to install some Windows software. Open the start menu or hit the windows key to open the start menu and then type in windows app support. By clicking on it, it will take you to the software center where you can install it with one click. Doing so will download Wine, the compatibility layer that mimics windows API calls so that windows software can run on Linux at times and bottles. 
a program that uses Wine makes it easy to install Windows software and access said installed software. Personally, Lutris would be a good choice for those who want to organize their software a bit more, but Bottles isn't bad at all. Keep in mind that not all Windows software will run through this compatibility layer. The software that does manage to run well, does actually run well for the most part. A cool extra feature that Zorin includes is Zorin Connect. Zorin Connect looks a bit like AirDrop in that it lets you send files from your phone to your computer and vice versa. For the Windows users watching this, you can install KDE Connect on Windows and get some of that functionality as well. Like on all Ubuntu based distros, installing your graphics drivers is a breeze. Just head over to Software and Updates and click the Additional Drivers tab and you should see drivers listed there. If you don't see any there, it can mean that either your hardware isn't supported or just common with NVIDIA, see my previous video. In some cases, it means that the drivers are already installed slash supported by open source drivers instead of having to use proprietary ones. But that may not be the case, so be sure to make sure. So all in all, Zorin OS may be decent for those that are switching, offering lots of software to make the transition less painful. Although it's important to remember that Zorin, or Linux for that matter, isn't Windows, and there will be differences and maybe some pain points when it comes to software and or workflow. Zorin to its credit does do its best to ameliorate some of the rough edges that may come with Linux, but probably won't ameliorate them all depending on your needs as an individual user. So that's all for today, and see you in the next one. Peace.